My name is JB Salee from Dallas, Texas. My wife and I both photograph weddings for the past 17 years. Today we're going to be talking about off-camera lighting and how to use strobes more effectively and also when to use strobes and when not to use strobes. So first tip today is to not muck up a great shot with strobes. Um, I found on a wedding day especially, we don't bring out the strobes until after the ceremony. We set them up for the, the uh, family formals and we're not going to slow down the bride's wedding day bringing out our strobes and making fancy images. For our portfolio, we just want to get really uh, nice available light images. So for example, this image, this was shot in Death Valley National Park at the Mesquite Dunes. Uh, we shot this at five in the morning and I didn't want to muck up the shot and use strobes and drag out all the strobes out there, which I could have done, made it look nice, but with the angle of light coming way off camera extreme, probably 85 degrees off camera to the left, uh, it looked really nice with the bride just running across and she ran across for about 25 minutes back and forth, tossing her own veil, and we got one awesome shot. Before we had kids, we would shoot every single night at sunset, get these beautiful images for our clients. And then when we had kids, we started making this excuse that we wanted to shoot during the afternoons and not at the peak hour, the golden hour, because we wanted to be with our kids, be parents, like everybody else, of course. So we started finding locations that were nice to photograph that had shade, and then we bring our strobes in to mimic the sun. And one of our go-to lighting uh, setups, I guess I would say, is one strobe 45 degrees off camera to the right as the main light with a OCF Pro Photo softbox. And then one 135 degrees off camera to the left and just cross light and mimic the pattern of the sun. So it looks like the sun is touching their skin, but it's actually just strobe. This is one of our images we shot at one of our international workshops last year in France. I chose this location because I, I liked the background. The castle was lit well with the available light, but the bride was actually in the shadow of the trees. So what we did, we set up two of our strobes Again, my go-to is 65 degrees off camera to the right with the Pro Photo B10 and an OCF Beauty Dish. And then to the left, 135 degrees off camera, we've got the Magnum Reflector shooting directly to the back of the subject to separate her from the backdrop. So the next tip I have is to use the sun as the kicker. I love doing this for our clients uh, to get that light coming from behind, spilling into the camera just a bit, into the lens, gives it a nice little whimsical look. But if we don't have a strobe on the subject, then the subject's gonna be silhouetted, and that's not gonna be nice. So we bring in a Profoto B10, full power, 500 watt. So we shot this in Olympic National Park, and you can see that we actually have the light holder and the strobe in the shot, which is necessary to make this image possible. So what we do is take another shot after we get our main shot, take everybody off the little ledge, and take that little spot, Photoshop the light holder and the light out of the shot. And you can see there's not too much we do in Photoshop to finish our images because they look really good straight out of camera because we are using off-camera lighting. So the next tip is if you want more drama from your imagery straight out of camera, use off-camera lighting and use extreme angles with your light. Even if you're not using strobes and you're not comfortable yet, look where your sun and your available light is coming from and make sure it's not directly behind you because then you get a flat lit image. You wanna make sure the sun's coming off from the side. If you want really dramatic imagery, make sure it's like 90 degrees off camera, turn your clients face 45 degrees in between the camera and the light source, you get perfect Rembrandt light every single time. So for this next image, this was shot in Denver at another one of our workshops. And it looks like this could be shot with available light, but there's actually two strobes set up, 90-90, shooting into each other towards the, the subject. And these are on snoots, so the light's not filling the ambiance of the courthouse. And what makes this work is we can stop this down a few stops, make the backdrop a lot darker, more dramatic, but it still looks very natural with the angles of light. As we've gotten a little more advanced in our career with our lighting, we found that we don't have to just light the subject all the time. We can also use the strobes to light the scene and the props. So in this next example, you can see we took one of the strobes, put it outside the window and let it flash while we're photographing this family. Just to add a little more dimension with light coming through the window, cascading onto the floor and not just being so flat lit. We love to photograph our clients and set up beautiful light on them, but also sometimes they bring some props. So if we have a couple that has an aircraft or they have a story of how they met, we say bring the props. We've got some extra strobes we can use and we'll set it up and light up the uh, props as well. So like I said before, our go-to is we're gonna set up our lights on the subject. And then if we need to, if we don't have enough strobes, we can take the subjects out of the shot, take another shot on a tripod or handheld, doesn't matter. And then we can light the props, the aircraft, the bags, as in this next example. And we can take those two images, marry them together, erase through, get the bags perfect, get the aircraft perfect, get the groom perfect, and get the bride perfect. And also get the light on our champagne glass perfect. So it's, it's kind of fun. You know, the more advanced you get with your lights, the more you can just play around and have fun. Your couple see you doing this, and they see you just working, and they're like, I hired the right person. 
Not only are they fun, uh, they're creative, but they know their stuff with lights. So one thing we like to do for our couples is to incorporate reflections. Uh, it's something that they don't see every day and it just makes their images look a little more magical. So I've learned over the years to make a reflection really work, you have to toss some light onto the subject. And using strobes, off-camera lighting is the best way to do it. For example, this next image, we used two strobes to light the scene. We used one strobe to light the subject. And then we used our angle to use a reflection and incorporate into this bridal image. And she loved it. And her mom loved it too. It's edgy, but it's also classical. The next tip I have for people is don't be limited by your strobes. If you need your strobes to be in the shot to light your subject, do it. Shoot with the light, the strobes in the shot, take them out later in Photoshop. One thing I like to do is shoot uh, a stitch of images. So I'll shoot five vertical images with the strobes in the shot. And then I'll take the subject out, I'll take the lights out, I'll reshoot it, and I'll grab all the images I need. And I can go in Lightroom now, it's really simple. Right click on those five images, photo merge, or photo stitch, sorry. And it makes a perfect panorama. And we sell a lot of three by one ratio images just because it looks different and our clients love that. So last tip I like to give people, if you want to get better at your craft, you got to practice, practice, practice. If you got to take your kids out, you got to take your dog out or your cat out and photograph them, do it. Have fun with it, take your strobes out, try different things. Put the strobe behind the subject and shoot into the strobe and get a different effect every time. So get out there and practice. Uh, if you'd like to practice with me, I'm holding a 26 City tour in 2019 and B&H is sponsoring. And first day on Thursdays, we're gonna be speaking for four hours on in-person sales, how to get new clients, how to make more money. The second day is limited to 15 students and you're gonna be shooting with me and models and I'll bring the strobes and it's hands-on education. We're gonna take the strobes around, get some beautiful shots in every single city and just have a lot of fun. You can find this information on our website at salibphotography.com, S-A-L-L-E-E, -L -L -E -E, and then just click on workshops. I'm JB Salee, thanks for tuning in, and I hope these tips helped. Looking at you is weird for me. <laughs> <laughs> no, like looking into your soul. <laughs> I'm gonna look past you a little bit. That's fine, you look at it all right, I'll look okay. at you all the time. Okay, cool. Fake, look around, it's fine. Yeah. It's whatever's natural.